Well, look who it is, the Lancashire Rat Pack. This little gang, right? They meet doing Territorial Army in a one-horse town called Roker Bridge. The big gang leader, Odge, he only joined because his mate Eric was in it. And they're really close, them two. They're like brothers. Get off! Not get off! Bloody yucca! Lady nothing! But then Odge got totally besotted with this dizzy singer called Laura. And Eric, nice lad, bit of a loser. He finally got his first ever job in promotional marketing. I knew you were going to fit in just fine. But they say that with a tear, don't they? That we all look different in our work clothes. Flaming great that turned out. Then things started to get a bit tricky for Odge. I'm going to buy some chips, tell you a little story about your boyfriend. I was 36. He was 17 years old. Please don't think that having a daughter automatically makes someone a father. Fish is dead! No! Oh, God, I then there's Lloydie. No. Brain of an addict. You're inventing a board game? Yeah. What's it called? Gurkha tank battle. Such well, it finally took Dawn to sort Eric's life out. Eric's one of life's wet spot plugs. He needs jump starting. And everything's sorted out all right for Odge and Laura, too. But like Joe Cocker said, who knows what tomorrow brings? It's a new day in Roker Bridge, and you never know what's coming down the track. OK. Now, the most important thing to remember, Eric, when your first ever girlfriend is arriving back in town, is that her first impression of you is what'll probably decide whether she's still interested. Right. So play it cool. When the train pulls in, don't rush up to the door. No. Just stand there. Right. Then, when the crowd clears, walk slowly up the platform. Yeah. Take your trilby off. Right. And say, Dawn, I've been the most ghastly wretch without you. You know, I won't forget you've been like this. Best of luck, mate. Hey, mate. Has the Rochdale train been in yet? Mm hmm? The 637 from Rochdale. Just been through, mate. You just missed it. Nah, <laughs> it can't have been. No, I, I was meeting someone off it. This girl, you know. That's right, young girl got off on her own. Were well, you kidding? What the what, what about this eye? Dark hair? That's her. It's alright though. There was a bloke here to pick her up. You what? She got off, he walked towards her with a sheaf of roses. They kissed, slung her bags at the back of a little Mercedes and drove off laughing. I love doing that. No, it's just coming in now, mate. Snugging, please. This is a no snugging station. Does anyone else want to do something to cock this up? Eric! Hey! Eric, if it wasn't cocked up, I'd be worried, okay? I know, I just wanted this to be special, you know. Well, snap! Because in here is something very special for us, Eric Boyo. In here is our first proper date. Two tickets. You and me are going to a ball. What do you think of that, eh? A ball? Oh, that's, that's... oh shut up. Yes, boss, sorry. Flame and move it, will ye? Okay, 
Now I'm sure the brighter ones on that, you must have twigged something's going on here tonight. I see. We're here celebrating a new role, folks. We've been chosen to be a support platoon, which I know sounds like we stop being soldiers and run around after everyone carrying bog roll, but I'm here to tell you that we're in fact becoming soldiers and a half. As of next week, we are officially Assault Pioneers. Here we go. Prepare to be gobsmacked. Thanks, Ian. Now, a couple of months ago, our next guest was made redundant, but instead of just sitting back, he found a way of using his rather unusual hobby to get himself off the dole queue. So it's welcome to the show now, Tony Lloyd. Hello, Tony. All right, ta. Uh. <laughs> now, you're a member of the, uh, the TA, the part-time army. Uh, that's right, Nick. Yeah, I am. Uh, at Roker Bridge. Yes. Yeah, why, why do you do that? Well, there's a gang of us that do it like. And they all have daytime jobs as well? Oh, ah, yeah. Well, uh, there's all. G works in a garden centre. Uh, Eric. Well, Eric done the note, really, I suppose. Oh, and cheers. Got, uh, Ali, she's married to the solicitor Vogue. Is that a job? Uh, Dawn's a student. Diesel runs a garage. And uh, Spock, he's this tall git with glasses who teaches history. <laughs> Smashing. <laughs> I was wondering what to put on my business card. <laughs> and your job? Well, uh, secret, actually, Nick. <laughs> uh, so, so when you um, lost this secret job, <laughs> you, you straight away went out and uh, invented a board game. What's it called? Gurkha Tank Battle. Right, I can't uh, believe I just heard those words yeah, on national it's television. And it's actually been bought up by a major games company. Where, where did you get the idea from in the first place? I knew all army training like, so I could put that in. He's going to talk about acronyms. Like acronyms. <laughs> That's when the first letter of a word makes up the letters of other words. So, if Nick Owen were an acronym, it'd be uh, nice, uh, intelligent, uh, and then there'd be one foot C and um, one foot K. It gets worse. Yeah, Please it's don't, don't tell me he does the thumb joke. And of all us like games and jokes generally like. Like that one where you... Well look, hold on. This is smart, this. Right. <clears throat> go on. Wind me thumb up. Go on, what? like that. What, like that? Well, go on, fast it. Oh, great. <laughs> Makes me laugh. He wasn't kidding. That games company really must have given him a 15,000 quid advance. Well, interestingly, Picasso always said the infantile mind was the most creative. Put it this way, do you think Picasso used to pull the green bit off tomatoes and repeatedly throw them in people's dinner showing, it's a spider? Yo there, Spock, are you great snooker cue with glasses? Why you doing? Makes me laugh. Hey, Hodge, lads, Corporal, today we're just... Oh, man. <laughs> the star's in shock. Oh, man, I tell you. Well, come on, what's it like on the telly? Sandwiches, man. Pardon? There's just sandwiches everywhere. After programme, they have this room called hospitality. Looks like snack bus has crashed into it. Prawns, crab sticks, chicken legs. I went back eight times. I mean, look what they were still going to chuck out. Oh, you didn't. Tell me you didn't. This first one, Ray... You think it's just toast, but actually, it's got prawns in it. I don't believe this. And this one, you think it's just cucumber, but actually... Oh, it is just cucumber, that's right. Look, forget the buffet. What else happened? Come on, what was the experience like? Did you talk to anyone afterwards? Well, just one at Production Girls. She asked me what I was going to spend my money on. And? Well, I said I were kind of undecided, you know. There were a few options in air, but I was biding my time before I committed me send. My God, a good answer. All I knew at this stage were it going to be some kind of gigantic red car. You're going to a ball? Roker College, end of term ball. Band, disco, eight course meal. Eight course? I mean, what the hell are the other five? Dawn's pain. Well, her parents are. You can't treat for finishing her exams, you know. Oh, that's nice of them. Yeah, they're the kind of parent to do that kind of thing. Really? Apparently, they put their videotapes in cases that made them look like books. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Are they vegetarians, these lot? Oh, they love a bit of tuna, be doing here, Missy Billy. What are you here for, anyway? What do you think I came here for? I have no idea. It had to be a big thing, didn't it, eh? First time you and me ever go out as a foursome? <laughs> what, me? Go to a ball? All right, now listen. My husband sent me to get some patio lights. Do you think six of these will be enough? Six of those will light up your patio beautifully, madam. 
The only trouble is you may also run the risk of having light aircraft landing in your garden. Pardon? Is your husband involved in the illegal nighttime shipment of narcotics? It's just for barbecues, really. Okay. Well, I'll just get you a couple out, eh? Hang on. You don't want to go? Eric, this is Hodge, okay? Balls aren't my scene, mate. You can adapt. Not to being what you're not. Look, we all have an essence, you see, in here, of what we are. I'm afraid, in essence, I'm not a dinner jacket Roger Moore. I'm more a uh, Mickey Rourke. What? A little Chinese bloke with glasses? Eh? In breakfast at Tiffany's. That's Mickey Rooney, Eric. Mickey Rourke was a leather jacketed style king in Rumblefish. If I was a little Chinese boat with glasses, I would effectively be Mr. Wang from the restaurant, at which point I would commit Harry Kitty. Oh, what's wrong with Mr. Wang? <laughs> That's very charitable, seeing as he's probably still got a contract out on you for chucking his promotional dragon suit into the river. Yeah, well, that's in the past. Yeah. Because he's not exactly a style king, is he, Sunshine? OK. We did only last week all have a good laugh about me joke about him featuring the magazine Dress Well for under a fiver. So that's it. You're not going to even ask a lot. Eric, Lord has a Joan Baez. New hippie, Greenpeace t-shirts. You're never gonna get Laura in a bald dress. Well, what do you reckon? Laura, I thought you were starting a catering business. So? Well, it's just I can't remember any of the dinner ladies at my school dressing like that. And that's what you think catering is? Being a dinner lady? You think I'm going to be standing at multinational conferences telling the chairman of ICI there'll be no crumble till he's eaten his liver? No, but... When Jeanetta Scarry gave me the break of catering for her next business conference, she did not say, Laura, love, can you come and dollop out some mash? Can you get that black suit, please? Enterprise Allowance Scheme. Guidelines for your new small business. Presentation is crucial, page one. The animal rights t-shirts, what's All that? gone. All gone? You have to be practical here, Hodge. You can't serve people aubergine volivants with a beagle smoking cigarettes on your chest. But well, you threw them away? I took them to Oxfam. Oxfam, right. You think we'll give victims of African crop failure a t-shirt with saying not to meet on the front? What is the matter with you? Just look in there. That. Now look at that. What do you see? The businesswoman. What about Laura Deleuze? Come on, we're not the kind of people who wear that kind of gear. I have a range of sensory instruments in my head, Hodge. And I have to tell you, the infertility snap detector is currently going haywire. Hey, hey, I am not an inverted snob. Well, I hope not, Sugar, because it's the saddest sound in the world. What is? Well, people who make this big point about never wearing posh clothes, because they think they're being loyal to some kind of rogue, laddish image they got of themselves. Yeah, well, it's, it's not... It's the most immature, infantile... I know! Sad! Yeah, all right, all right, I know that! Anyway, what's the problem? A lot of blokes find this gear dead sexy, you know. Well, you must have done once. And Jeanette used to wear it. You want an igloo? Now, what have you gone all huffy for? I got some igloos. Do you want one? We can't just never talk about this, Hodge. You can't sweep something like that under the carpet. Leave one hell of a bump. Especially if I'm going to be working with the woman. Come on. Whole story. Once upon a time, a 17-year-old called Hodge was working in a Blackpool hotel when he had an affair with a 36-year-old divorcee on the rebound called Ginetta, giving rise to a doctor called Kirsty. Jeanetta and Kirsty went off to Portugal and came back... Is it helping you, this, Laura? Because if it is, that's fine. But when it's finished, can we stop, please? It's not for me, this, Hodge. Well, OK, let's stop, then. Because if I'm not allowed to see Kirsty again, great, finito. I don't tend to get things out in the open. I tend to turn lights off and draw curtains and push chairs under door handles. Anyway, if I was an inverted snob, I wouldn't be taking you to a ball this Saturday, would I? Oh, she's got to be dead. You're supposed to 
be praying so you didn't see that. Is it now she goes in the ground? Kirsty. in heaven and water goes everywhere as everyone shouts off flipping neck now just Amen Amen Right uh, Mrs Scarry uh, normally at this point in the service I have a line outside where the bereaved can meet the relatives but it's um, well it, it's um... it's not exactly Genesis at Nebworth is it they're not playing Nebworth are they Sorry? Genesis? They're not playing Nebworth again, are they? Figure of speech. Oh. All right. Sorry. A bit of a fan. Oh. Well, uh, I was. You know, uh, early albums like Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. Well, she wasn't exactly the best loved person in Blackpool, my mother, and uh, you reap what you sow, don't you? <laughs> Is that why you brought the little one? Swell the ranks. I brought her because it's half term and I've no other protocol available to me. Anymore. Thank you, darling. Oi, spot face, what's happening, man? You were planning to buy a car, isn't that right? Yeah. Come on, I'm giving up my Saturday to help you here. I didn't ask you. No, but a soldier is trained never to abandon his comrade in the face of certain destruction. Destruction? Oh, yes, Lloydy. Because having a lot of money will suddenly make this whole world like that big buffet. Suddenly there's nothing to stop you totally gorging yourself. Smart. Well, that's very dangerous. There you are. Isn't this smashing? Hmm? Five-speed gearbox for economy. Three seat belts in the back. Have you seen the back seat? I'm practically sitting in it. Will you stop going on about how small it is? Do any of these buttons do old interest? I'm missing. Look, the good thing about this one is it's 0% finance. That's well, because it's 0% car. It is a nice car. It's not a demon of the road, though, is it? I mean, it's not exactly flash. You see, this is exactly why I came. I knew it. It'll disappear, Lloydy. A £15,000 advance might seem like a fortune now, but if you don't think practically, mate, it'll just go push and disappear like that. Come on. You don't like this particular car. What kind of car do you want? One that goes push and disappears like that. For crying out loud. Right. Now I want this Frank, OK? You tell me exactly what you think when you see this. Ready? Ready. And the 1994 Footballer of the Year. Thank you. Oh, what? Well, yeah, you said say what you think. Thanks for that. Oh, mate. come on. Let's just no, you don't. Let's, let's just see it. Not let everyone that. see. Thank oh, you. Don't be such a. But let's just. Ah! <laughs> What's the matter? You look all right. I look like a footballer. God, I wish I had that problem. Tell you, when I put a dinner jacket on, I look like a British Legion organist. Anyway, what's it for? Well, I was thinking about this ball when I... I thought Mickey Rooney didn't go to balls. Rourke. And he doesn't. I'm only thinking about Laura, for background. See when an eight-course meal gets laid out. It'll be experienced when she starts her own business. A business? Sorry? Well, Laura, I joined Greenpeace instead of CND because Tuesdays when I had my aerobics is starting their own business. Yes. You mean catering, catering for business functions? Yes, Eric. Which means she's moving into a new professional circle. Which is why I'm going to buy this and take her to that ball. Okay? Hmm. So, how much is it? Um. I mean, how the hell can they justify that amount of money for one suit? I mean, hey, you know, why don't you just splash out another ten quid and buy up the whole textile factory? You could try hiring one, eh? Where do you get yours? Well, I was going to borrow my dad's, you know, but... Look, we could try a hire shop in Preston next Saturday, eh? Well, it's cutting it a bit fine, that, isn't it? Mm. If they've got nothing in my size. It really means something to you, this, doesn't it? Do you realise? 
that was the first time in recorded history Hodge ever asked Eric for advice. Yeah, well, have a good time, eh? Bring us a balloon. Lloydie, will you keep your finger off that button? Hey, Spock, who's bottom of your seat gone wall? Just listen to what the gentleman's telling you and don't press that. Why? Makes me laugh. You see, the thing with origami, right? The thing with origami is, it's crap. People say to me, Peter, you want to make your napkins up to look like bishop's hats or ducks? I said, if you think I'm going to night school to learn all that, on your bike. Sad thing is, people seem to think you've got to do all that sort of thing to look classy. You want to see the wine list? It's OK. Someone's taking me out tonight, actually. Better let them choose. Right, we'll have the Emperor Banquet. Sound. What's the Emperor Banquet? Top of the bill. Like a special banquet. Only at the end you can have any member of staff summarily executed. What about wine? I've got a brand new wine list. Oh, wine, yeah, right. What about... 27? A nutty bouquet, redolent with an aftertaste that unfolds into peaches. Did you write these? Yeah. Well, I copied them onto a napkin in this wine bar in Preston. Fantastic descriptions, aren't they? Sound really classy. I mean, some of them don't apply to them actual wines, like. Right, well, a bottle of that, anyway. And a Chablis. Flaming neck. It's Christmas. Oi, I told Eric you were taking me out for a pre-exam meal, not a total bender. Ah, shut up. Well, that's what this ball's supposed to be for afterwards. You won't be drinking at that. It's your first date, love. You'll be wandering around like Ryan O'Neill and Ali McGraw pointing at fireworks. Oh, aye. That's what happened with you and Fraser on your first date, is it? Nah. Well, it's a trickier thing with an older man, isn't it? Especially if he's your dad's business partner and married to your mum's best friend. What did you do? Checked into a travel lodge on the A627 under the name of Mr. and Mrs. Bennett. See? When you're approaching 30, you'll look back all dewy-eyed and remember what you knew playing at that ball. I look back and remember what false identity I assumed in Stockport. Enjoy it. I know. I will. Well, that's why I've done this, really. I'm not into balls and that. I just... I want the first time we go out to be really special. The name's Bond. James Bond. British Legion organist. Hey, you will make love and I'll play. How about this one? It's not black, but it's smart. Oh, dinner suit. I still stand at a spare dinner suit. Hey, would you look at that? Not a spare suit Dad may have once eaten dinner in. You know, the last time this was out, don't you? This is the one he's got on in that photo. You know, on the dressing table. Oh, don't show me again. Please. Hey, Mum, does Dad have an older one, aren't you, Kapoor? This is that one from the night at the restaurant when they gave him the easel and the brushes and the 20 oil paints. One for each year. And he did that speech about if the army stopped needing him as a sergeant, he'd try and get back in as a war artist. It didn't work, though, did it? Come and show. Come in the front room and show. Oh, no, no. The woman in Manchester said we don't let him bury good things. Please, Mum, I she don't want She said that, the good memories, and it was a smashing night. Colin! Colin, look at this pet. Do you remember getting it for your 20th year in the regiment? Rob, the son of which former British lion made his first appearance for Wales against Canada earlier this season? Scott Quinnell. Oh, well, that flaming livened him up, didn't it? <laughs> eh? Hey, quick, you stop him swinging from the lampshade and I'll get a sedative. What do you want, the name of the son or the name of the... Oh. Another bottle of 27 coming up. Sound. You see, Lloydie said something deeply significant before. What did he say? Ali is married to this solicitor. Well, it's true. <laughs> When I was your age, I used to despair of women who were summed up in terms of what they were married to. Oh, you are my age. 30, Dawn. 29. I'm approaching the 30 checkpoint in the great RAC rally of life. And they're going to lift me boot up and say, Do you realise, madam, you've got vast quantities of fuel here that you haven't used? And why hasn't madam used it? Because by the age of 24, I'd got a husband, 80k income, lotus esprit and a swimming pool. Nothing kills motivation like luxury. Oh, thanks a lot. See you in the 
Wednesday. But... Hey, it looked like she had more than jasmine tea. What are you doing? Hey. Eric, sitting on walls waiting for people to come out of places is what you do when you're 14. Yeah, well... <laughs> the owner's probably still got a contract out on me regarding a certain dragon suit, hasn't he? You know, I haven't worked out yet how to explain. I chucked it off a viaduct because I thought it destroyed my relationship with my new girlfriend. Fair point. No, I, I just fancy walking you back to college, you know? Get out of the house a bit. That okay? No, no, it's not that. I, I just had to pick up a dinner suit for Hodge, actually. Why? Well, they're not going to let him in his ball without a DJ, are they? Pardon? My ball? Uh, what? There won't be any tickets left. Our ball? I was going to... Extraordinary! Ex he invites himself to our ball, then he organises you running around after him. Bloody hell! The lad's just a corporal waiting to happen, isn't he? Uh, no, no, it's me. It, it's what? Look, I asked him. Because I didn't want him to think that everything suddenly changed with us going out. You know, like that it's the end of an era or something. God, I hate ends of eras. And now I think it really means something to him going. He hasn't got any kit and I was just being Eric. <laughs> oh, come on. Hey, do you not have a coat? Well, look who it isn't. I come out with a coat, and who do I find? Dizzly the Dragon Slayer. Oh, God. Well, well, well. Right, Mr. Wang. I know what you're thinking, Mr. Dizzly. You're expecting me to come over and do you in over that dragon costume, aren't you? I was wondering. Well, I might have done. Yes, I might have. If I'd been a rooster. Pardon? Or a sneak. But luckily for you, Mr. Dizzly, I'm a monkey. Right. What is that better, is it? You see, the year of the monkey means you're a fatalist. <laughs> you believe in signs, like that dragon in the river. Oh, it was a sign? Yes! All that golden dragon image was crap. I should never have changed the name from Audrey's. <laughs> you see, Audrey Hepburn was class, Mr. Disney. And people want class. So now, it's all start again. New name, the Roman Holiday Chinese Restaurant with a special Audrey's Choice wine list. Dump the old DJs for the new clubber with the paisley lining. And bingo, you attract the type of clientele who spends 80 quid on flash wine. Funny, isn't it? If I was a rooster, I'd probably have my brothers out with a contract on you right now. But because I'm a monkey, probably ends up I owe you one. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> so I suppose there'll be some old dinner suits you're trying to get rid of, eh? You what? Right. Now, this is the main hall where I want the buffet serving. Yes. You see, I wasn't exactly sure what design would suit a conference in this kind of location. Mainly indoors, but with access through the gardens. I presumed what you need is something easily portable that won't sink into the floor and allows you total freedom of movement. Yes. So, in the end, I plumped for this off-the-shoulder thing in pulled silk with quarter-inch court shoes. Does that sound all right? Sorry, Laura. Up until the pulled silk there, I thought we were talking about display fridges. Kirsty, out. I've warned you. Touch one of those roses and an alarm goes off in Manchester. Sorry about the mobile crash. We've been slightly down on daytime child minder since my mother disappeared into the eternal bonfire. No, it's brilliant. Seriously, I think it's brilliant how you keep things going on your own. You see... Anyway, Laura, if you're hiring fridges, I need to know how many, the total power wattage, where you need vehicular access, and how many tables you need for the main buffet display. And remember, these are business people you're dealing with, Laura. They're not interested in how good your pastry is. They want drama. The general rule is, get as much as you can of things no one's ever eaten before, and whatever they have eaten before, arrange it to look like a swan. OK. Absolutely. It's like I told Hodge about the dress. It's presentation, isn't it? It's crucial. How is the boy? Oh, he's OK. You need to know vehicle. Access. No change with you two. Everything OK? As far as I know. As far as I know. 
Does he mention us at all? Well, uh, Kirsty. He's learning. I mean, it'll take a while to completely borrow the F word, but then they don't publish books to help with that, do they? The mother care guide to not being a father. He must hate me. Does he? Keeping him away from her? No, no. Like you said, having a daughter doesn't automatically make someone a father. Especially if he's on a different planet socially. I mean, to you and all this. Hodge is the guy who still wears the same red T-shirt he bought to see you be 40 in nine years ago. He's a good lad. Hmm? You're lucky. He's not bad. Now, was it total wattage you needed? You kidding? You got me a dinner suit? You went home? Eric, what? I just want you to know that if I was the kind of guy who did that kind of thing, I'd be hugging you now. Right, boys and girls. I seem to remember at school, if the teacher was in a good mood, you played games on the last day of term. Well, this is apparently our last week's training as an infantry platoon. So... To add a little twist to this shooting exercise, I've replaced the usual pop-up cardboard targets with deranged members of a Middle Eastern militia who'll be lurching out at you with curved knives. Not really. Hodge, Eric, you're first. Was that a joke? Yeah, well, he's a happy little bunny at the moment. Is he? Well, think about it. What's special about the structure of an assault pioneer platoon? It's got two sergeants. Right, and how many sergeants have we currently in our platoon? Just Sergeant Betty. Dum, de dum, dum. Out of nowhere, a new set of stripes up for grabs. And who got recommended for his sergeant's course at Senior Brecon? Ah. Oh. Laughing boy thinks he'll be walking straight back into a sergeant's post to play the mini Mussolini over me. But what he doesn't know is I've just been recommended for Senior Brecon too. Better tell him, I suppose. Why aren't you telling him? He won the toss. <laughs> <laughs> Where the hell do you get a dinner suit? I mean, it is okay, isn't it? I hear. No, it's a decent style. The kind of, you know, the kind of Mickey Raw could wear if he had to. <laughs> Where's it from? Look, I have to tell you, I'm a fairy godmother who operated your flaming one or not policy. Right, right. Okay, mate, ready? Got it. Your dad. He had a spur. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. Go! Hey, Pete! Pete, can I have a quick word? Degsy, for you, mate, anything. Right! Out! I said out, Spock! Do you want me to shout at him bloody Latin? Mate, 30 minutes ago he was talking about bringing in games, now it's back to Satan Pitbull. So are we getting there? A bus leaves at college car park at seven. It takes us out to the hotel. Bus? Go to a ball in a bus? Sobering thought, actually, that. About bringing in games. I can remember bringing in Monopoly. Next year, kids across the country could be bringing in Gurkha Tank Battle. Yeah, well, at least if they do, the inventor won't be going mad with all the money. Oh, yes, he will. It's Lloydy. No, 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 no. No, not anymore, no. I thought, Spock, come on. He's just going to throw it all away. You can't stand by. So I took him out looking at cars to teach him a bit of money management. Really? Yeah. We did a comparison chart of fuel consumption in two-door family saloons. I let him deliberate him between an F-Reg Fiat Uno and a G-Reg Renault 5. I knew you'd be impressed. I tell you, I was this far off buying that Renault when I saw this photo in Small Lads. I mean, this is a car, isn't it? Well, I don't know. Hey, is there still a car down your end, Dodge? I'm sorry. Did someone call my name three miles away? I tell you, they don't make cars like this anymore. That's probably because they ran out of metal making this one. Hey? You've not bought this. Tell me they've just lent you this while they valet your Renault. Oh, them other cars didn't suit me, Spock. This is the sort of car that suits me. Why? Because it's big and stupid and consumes a vast amount of fuel. Hey? We made a list of practical small cars. This is practical. 
as long as you don't drive at under five mile an hour for more than 90 meters. Ah, well it overeats you see. Bloke said it's all right. It's just cause they're built for cruising the plains of the American Midwest. Oh. Oh well it's a goodbye then mate. Goodbye. But hold on. This is East Lancashire. Don't kick it. I spend all Saturday evaluating fuel consumption and you buy a car that runs out of petrol before you get off the garage forecourt. Ah, you have to look at it is. What you lose in economy like, you make up for in buttons. It's Button City down here. What's this? <sighs> Makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah. Well, fine. I mean... Why should he take any notice of my advice? I'm a fool! This is Spock, isn't it? I think you upset him. Well, you may not like it, but I do, Lloydy. Hey. We're all sorted, mate. From now on, leave it to me. I don't believe I'm seeing this. Chuck us me jacket. When did you get this? Oh, I forget. First time I went to something like this, I suppose. You lose track. The coach leaves in 20 minutes. Why are we coming here first? Well, we all have to meet at Hodges Caravan. Says who? Well, what says? Incredible. He's organised everyone again. The man is a corporal. He can't help it. I, I think he just wants us to go together. The four of us, you know. Great. And what's she actually like, then, this Laura? Why is she saying... She's a singer who's in Greenpeace. Right, let's get the bus, like I said. I was, was, actually. Hey, you're here. Laura. Hi, Dawn. Hodge. You've met Laura, haven't you? Eric, grab this, will you? Have we? Rockabell show. I was doing a display of four-ton truck maintenance. You were eating candy floss? Right. So is it OK? Fantastic. Well, you've done a cracker. You know, I love this style. Just that bit baggy, it's like a little crotch. It's like a zoot suit, isn't it? <laughs> right, are we off then? We are, oh yes, indeed. Right, well, let's, uh, let's move. Um, the bus leaves in 20 minutes, so... Others may be going in a bus, Eric. We are cruising. Music, champagne and wheels. This one's on me. I'm paying him. OK, ladies and gentlemen, our chauffeur and carriage. If you would like to step inside, he will convey you in style. Hodge, I can't stop. If I stop, it comes out. I have to keep going. Listen, I'll turn around and come back. OK, here he comes. Don't open the door till you're going the same speed as the car. Funny, I never thought I'd hear that sentence whilst wearing a ball dress. Don't say anything. Am I saying anything? Go, go, go! Howell, but if she does, be strong. The last babysitter from your agency ended up playing My Little Pony till half midnight with a tea towel down the back of her ski pants. OK, love. I'll get her. Kirsty, Mummy's going. But how little the babysitter knew, because of course Kirsty would be sitting in the passenger seat with the safety belt on. Goodbye, Kirsty. I want to go to the party. It's not a fun party, Kirsty. Then why have you got a party dress on? Because grown-ups don't always go to parties for fun, sweetheart. They go for a wide variety of tactical reasons. Currently, because it's a summer business party given by an old client, and that's where you go to meet new clients. Oh, there she is. I take you if I could, Bobbin, believe me. They're not much fun on your own. Listen, I forgot. Just emergency. If the cell phone conks out, is there a number for Kirsty's dad at all? I'm afraid Kirsty's father isn't really around. I'm sorry. At all? 
there's another number on the pad. Unbelievable, aren't they? I know what you mean, though, love. I've been through all that. Mine was a low life. Did exactly the same. He's not a low life, Mrs. Hull. He's a very sweet man. He's just not around. He's just not around. Come on. Look, I am not walking in there and asking for a chip back. Look, chauffeur's got off somewhere while you're all through that banquet. I'm not going in the happy trucker dressed like this. You walk in there, we have engine grease all over you, it all goes quiet. We'll bring you something out. Lloydie, can't even stop this car at once. I'm getting dizzy. The croutons will hit the soup in four minutes. I know, I know, but if you've whacked down 200 on a flash dress, it is quite nice cruising in style, eh? Excuse me, is there any chance of us getting past, please? Past? Yeah, yeah, sure. One minute. Hey, girls. Can you form yourselves into that gigantic arch we normally do when someone wants to get past? Very good. I can't go at five mile an hour for more than 90 metres. How far are you going, mate? On, my friend, till I find a homeland for these, my people. Oh, goodies from the funny farm. Lloydie, sorry, what did you say? Don't. We can't stop and we can't go at five miles an hour for more than 90 metres. It's all right, like. Bloke said, uh, if red light comes on, just drive round for a minimum of eight miles till it goes off. What red light? That one that's just come on. <laughs> well, take a card, you never know. <sighs> Jeanetta! Jeanetta's scary! My God! My God! Denise! <gasps> How are you? It's been years! No, oh, well, I've not been around. Well, you've not? Tell me about it. Abu Dhabi, love. Royal insurance. Four years of sand and no gossip. Forget, forget. Come sit. Well, has the light gone out yet? I don't know. There's another couple come on now. A couple? Lloydie, this dashboard's starting to look like the floor of a 1970s discotheque. Hey, what's that flashing green one mean? It means someone in Preston isn't wearing a seatbelt. Will they do two sittings for dinner? Look, the car was a lovely idea, Hodge, and it's very nice, Lloydie. But let's just turn around and get a taxi. Ford, what? Ford, Ford Lloydie, there's a Ford there. Where? That wet thing going across the road, slow down! Hey! You pay money for that? My, my. Isn't it quiet out here? What when you've got no engine anymore and that? Sorry, right. You get a free call out thing on this model. It says it manual. Oh. It's only valid within 200 miles of Detroit. God, can your husband throw business parties? He's not my husband anymore, actually, Denise. Isn't he? Well... You're better off single. At least there were no kids on the scene to mess it up. You never had any, did you? I do have a daughter, in fact. But she's not great. Oh, well, thank God. You remarried. I didn't mean it. Better off single. I was lying through my teeth. I mean, I'm a feminist. You know that. But I couldn't do without a man around. Just having half the bed cold. That's what got to me. Between Peter and David. Half the bed cold and the rest of the house just feeling wrong. Doesn't it? Just wrong. Anyway, what's his name, this new guy? <sighs> Will you excuse me, please, Denise? In a minute, things will go right. In a minute, we will find a phone box and Diesel will be in and come out in his breakdown and everything will be all right. <coughs> hey! There's a little bundle of spanners here, wrapped up in a copy at New York Times. So, Laura, Eric tells me you were in Greenpeace. Yes, Greenpeace, CND, Friends of the Earth. 
I kind of alternated between that and cooking. And singing. Right. Only daughter in a family of brothers. Mm. Mm. But I'm in business now. Catering. I met this woman, Dawn. Janetta. Strong, strong woman. What exactly is a strong woman? I've always wondered. Well, she's got a business. She's got a child. And she's coping with both on her own. She doesn't depend on having a man in her life. Behaving like a teenager. Oh, go home. Be on my side. Please be on my side. Over this hill, be a phone box. You know what's happened here, Eric? We shouldn't have come in Lloydie's car. I made a mistake. Luke. This was your night, you organised it, you asked me, I did one thing and I cocked it up. And I'm sorry, that's what Eric does, not Hodge. What is happening? It's not me that organises things, it's Well, you. it was this time, wasn't it? It's all changed. Don't make it worse by being modest. Oh, this is your night, these are your tickets, you organised, this is your suit you borrowed from your dad, okay? Uh, no, don't. Yes, Eric, don't be modest. No, it's okay. No, no, let's flame and get this out in the open. Where's the label? No! Yes, there, look. Property of Mr. P. Wang, okay? No! Not the most uncool dinner suit in Lancashire! Right, Laura. This strong woman. Would you say you were modelling yourself on her? I. Well, kind of. Yes. And is it working? Pardon? Are you feeling strong enough to clout that spanner with that rock? Look, put it back on. No. Yes. Look, you just said it was like a suit suit. That's before I knew it was a nerd suit. <laughs> you knew I was off my territory here. You sat and laughed with me about Mr. Wang being in dress well for under a fiver, and now you've dressed me up in that actual... Oh, OK. OK, just, just forget the suit. Just, just forget it. <laughs> It's got nothing to do with the suit, has it, all this? What? The reason you're doing all this? I'm doing this because Laura is going into business and hey, she... Hey, Eric! This is Eric. I know what's going on. She'd be past her expiry date by now, wouldn't she? Normally. One girl, six months, and we get in the love dinghy and paddle off in search of fresh coconuts. But she's changing. And you're trying to keep up. Shut up. That's what's happening here, isn't it? Hmm? Shut up. <laughs> hey, he's got it going, mate. <laughs> this is what's more important. Lord the Luz or Mickey Rock. Hmm? Hey! Good luck, Lordy. <laughs> Hey, and it's just thinking you know nothing about cars, eh? <laughs> How's your kit, Hodge? Ready? I'm fine. He's fine. <laughs> okay, let's go, go, go before this ball's totally over. Somehow, Eric, I think the time for balls may have passed. <laughs> Apparently, I'd ruptured me some. Good job we had an MT girl on board, eh? Well, here we are. It's half nine, it's the middle of nowhere, it's getting dark and we're covered in sump oil. What do you fancy organising for us next, Hodge? Now, isn't that smashing? Doesn't that look just fantastic? I've always liked this place, actually. You know, no nonsense kind of cuisine. Hey, Dom, are you not having that tomato? I mean, actually, these Happy Trucker specials are really quite good value. Good value, yeah. yeah. Great value, actually. Because you do get loads. I mean, look at all that salad you get with your chip bap. Hey, Donald Clark, it's a spider. <laughs> Makes me laugh. <laughs>